I'm Baroness Lucia and I'm talking with Morning and Off Lady. Do you guys want to introduce with your full names and titles? Go ahead. Okay. I'm um, Viscountess Alfleda, 11th Viscountess of Eldermere, Mistress of the Pelican. Um, I've been, I was one of the original Scrails. Um, I've been in the SCA for 40 years. My first Penzik was Penzik 9. Uh, Holy crap. Apart from four when we were out west in Castle Rouge, we've, I've only missed one, and this year. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I've, we've been, I've been to pretty much every Penzik, barring four of them. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm uh, Viscount Mordain Black Cloak, Ninth Viscount of Eldermere, Elias, which is to say right. And uh, I've been to missing the same four she did, uh, and one more. I've been to everyone since Penzik 8. Uh, how, how has Penzik changed since Penzik 8? <laughs> Well, it was originally only a weekend, not even necessarily a long weekend. Yeah, and it's funny. We always say every year when we're packing up on Friday that in the old days, that's the day we would be arriving. <laughs> and then we'd be leaving Sunday afternoon. Yeah, you, you'd leave Thursday night, drive overnight, get there Friday, set up a tent, which took 20 minutes because it was just a tent, right? Yep. We didn't have the big, you know, big setups we have today. And then... I don't think the fighting started on, there was an opening. Fighting didn't start until Saturday. Saturday. So Saturday there'd be the the woods battle, the field. No, Sunday was the woods it, battle. It, it varied. Yeah. It varied with the schedule, but there would be two days of fighting, Saturday and Sunday. And you pack up Sunday and go home. And Pensacate, <laughs> due to various reasons, mostly it was rainy, we only fought one battle uh, for the whole war. There was only one battle and some champions fights. Is the, were the battles in the same spot? No. No, the woods was down the in the swamp. bog. Yeah. And that road that goes penetrating into the bog was the prime fighting spot. It was a big elevated causeway sort of thing. And there was a lot of fighting on that, mostly to little point, but everybody had fun. And the, where the Rosaki camp, that used to be the archery field. Oh, wow. And um, everybody pretty much camped up on Horde Hill. That was kind of the only camping area. A little bit was coming over on the other side of the barn, but not much. Yeah, so everyone was up top. Nobody was in. The, we didn't go down to the woods till Penzik 11. That was the first year that people camped down there. And um, Eldermere or Septentria Sprail, as it was at the time, was the first to camp down there. And, we, so. and that's when... And this is Spots for Septentry and Scrail still camp are where they started camping. So, and, really? For a very long time. <laughs> yeah. And Runestone Hill was the main battlefield. Yes. Where the Serengeti is now is the parking lot. That would be rough if you were on the down. Yeah. <laughs> well, you would, you would do it sideways. Yeah. Okay. Where you yeah. to side with cross like that. Yeah. Anyway. How many, what was the biggest battle back then? Well, it depends what year you're talking, of course, because it gradually got quite large. Uh, Penzik 13 and 14, which were the ones before I got my break, we had close to a thousand aside. Wow. Bigger than it was. But now. by that point, we um, the Serengeti was the battlefield. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So we we sort of outgrown the runes. Penzik 11 was the last time we fought on the runestone. Yeah, and then after that, yeah, where the Serengeti is now was the main battlefield. Mm -hmm. Were you guys prince and princess at Penzik? Uh, we Penzik were 20, 20... 20 something. Uh, 1995. Uh, no, 90, 90, yeah, 1995. Whatever and actually, we were Aaron Harris. Roak was prince. We were prince to Roak, but um, that year the princess did not come to Penzik, so I essentially had to be the princess because I was the heiress, so I kind of had to do the job. But. Um, yeah, it was, again, Penzik was, by that point, Penzik was, was more or less the same, I, I mean, smaller than it is now, but more or less, you know, they had, the battlefield was where it is now. Yeah, by Penzik 13, 14, it was, it was starting to lengthen. Everybody would, things would happen on Friday as opposed to people just showing up on Friday. And it kind of gradually, then people started showing up on Wednesday and then Tuesday and then, you know, people would come in Monday and camp the week. I don't remember when it started being a week-long event. But uh, sometime in the teens, I think. Yeah, because um, our last Penzik was the first lot was 
15 for you. 15, for me. 15 yes, because you were, um, we moved out to um, Castle Rouge. And we noticed in the four years we were gone, like when we left, it was just after the proscription of Outermere. Right. When, you know, so that Penzik that he missed because he was in military training and I went to, um, was when we were not allowed to be Eldermere and it was kind of a bit of a downer event. Oh, yeah. In a way, because, you know, everybody, we didn't know what was going to happen. We were forbidden to be what we are, although we kind of were anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think in the end, we decided, you know, even if we can't call ourselves that, we will just be Eldermere because that's what we are. And, um, you know, you, you, I'm sure you've heard the story of the doom of Eldermere. That was very much. It was very emotional. Very emotional at the time. Yeah. actually yeah. spoke yeah. that told that story aloud at the at a, and at a, the first event. time we heard it everyone was in tears <laughs> was, yeah. but then we were gone for four years living out west and we came back and it was already on the second reign of the principality yeah. so we kind of missed that whole era generation of change there that happened right and then a lot of the friends that we had had before we moved had kind of been burned out by the process of going going principality and so it was kind of a new generation had uh, you know, when, when Roak won Crown and Osis, we hadn't really known them when we, before we left. So they had kind of joined and become forces, well, in the, in the um, time we were gone. Yeah. So it was a new generation when we came back and Penzik had changed. Just as much. Just as much, so. Weird things about Penzik 10 that I remember is Duke John Bearkiller, who, if you, you know anything about the BOD, he's been chairman of the BOD several times. Uh, he was even a Duke back in Penzik 10, and he was walking into, and I have pictorial evidence of this, walking onto the field with, I'm only here for the beer, duct taped to his shield. And Finvar, who was wearing a barrel helm, which had a flat top, had put in tape on the top of his helm, hit me here. So it was a little bit more lighthearted in many ways back in the early days. Well, we were all, yeah, I mean, now the average age is, I don't know, what, 45, 50, back then? No idea. 25, right? You know, we were all mostly students, and, you know, we could have come the gamut from being a teenager at Penzik right through being parents to being, you know, old and feeble like we are now. <laughs> you know, 40 years, it changes a lot. You, know? you were you were knighted at Penzik, Mordain? Penzik 11, yes. That's a long time ago. <laughs> Baby, literally, almost literally. I was 23 at the time. <laughs> Holy crap. And it was a very unusual night in many ways because back then there was a crown list in the Middle Kingdom and you worked your way up it. And the king at the time, King Andrew, left me off the list, so I assumed I was not going to get knighted. But then Finvar called all of uh, Septentria slash Grail onto the runestone field and said, and this is also kind of odd, because why would Finvar be the one doing this? But he announced to the, all of the Canadians that, that I was going to be knighted the next day. And then he told me to go sit my vigil in my tent. And this was not your standard vigil that you get nowadays. This was no. me sitting alone in a tent all night. Yeah. Oh. And, uh, as far as I know, it was the second vigil in the entire SCA. Yeah, because Back then, back then. Yeah, back then peerages were just like any other award. You were kind of called up in court, you got it. Yeah. Your award, you know. And even and you know, even laurelings and pelicans were not that different from a willow, you know, from a, from, from a, a higher award, award. No, except that you got a medallion. Yeah. I'm not even sure they did fealty. I don't remember. I think knights they did. did. Knights were knightings were always, you know, the ceremony was and then the, in the actual but knighting ceremony, they were always surpri usually surprises. So. It was it was also quite weird because the king, presumably because he had no idea who I was, uh, <laughs> stood to the side. The prince said all the words the king would normally say, and Finvar held the sword and actually knighted me, which was very unusual. And you got to give King Andrew props for that. Because Andrew was a knight, he could have done it. He could have done it. Yes, yeah. and that's why. If you people get knighted in Finvar's lineage, and now you'll usually see as, as many knights of our household as there are in a chain between the king and the candidate now. Nice. That's really cool. Yeah, well, it was a very cool thing he did, and I, I yeah. 
you know, something. <laughs> he was an unusual man, Andrew oh, would yes. seldom rest, but. Yes, um, we won't go into that. <laughs> <laughs> but he had his moments. Oh, yeah. Were you pelicaned at Penzik too, off no, later? I was not. I was pelicaned up in Sprail, actually. Oh, nice. I was the first when, after we became a kingdom, so it's, I would say much more recent, but it's not that recent. <laughs> Twenty years. You know? It's two thousand or so. Two thousand. Yeah. Ninety nine or two thousand. Yeah. But no, I was actually done it in in Scrail. So I, I was. In, it was a winter rain for David and Elena, and I wanted it to be. It was important that I have it done at home here. Nice. Um, do you uh, wish you could go back in time more, or are you liking the progress that we've made? I'd like to be young again. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't we all? Yeah. But one thing is um, that is much better is just the medievalness of Pensick. Everyone back then had mundane tents. We were, you know, the, the quality students. of, the, we were starving students. <laughs> yeah. But the, the quality of the, of the, of the tents, of the garb, of the armor, you know, everything is more medieval now. And, um, you and, know, and, that's an improvement. And you still get the, the light-hearted fun bit down in the bog uh, and and elsewhere of course well, but uh, but it's uh, it's a little bit more serious seeming than it was back in the it's day. more of a city than a group of friends now you know yeah. it used to be there was no encampments there was no land grab people just sort of set up wherever although there were kind of traditional areas that had formed because I think Penzik 6 was the first at Cooper's Lake yes so when we were there by seven, eight, nine, you know, we'd only been there for a couple, two, three years, right? So um, it wasn't quite the, you know, there wasn't quite the same traditions, although two years is a tradition in the SCA. You know? It totally is, yes, for sure. <laughs> but yeah, you know, it wasn't, people didn't put ropes around their encampments and stuff. You just kind of wandered wherever. And, you know? That's right. and I think there's something missing in that, but also there's a difference between having a thousand people and having 10,000 people, so. You know. Oh yeah, for sure, yeah. And your know, merchants just tended to be mostly blanket merchants. They would just have their, you know, the quality, again, the quality of what's sold at Penzik is much higher than it used to yeah, be. There was no food court. Yeah, there was no food court. You gotta, yeah. But when you're only there for a couple days, yeah, it, it's uh, really easier to rough it. But, um, when did they start doing such grand opening ceremonies? They always had an opening. Yeah, yeah they always had an opening ceremony, but of course with one tenth the people, it was much quicker and, and uh, it would generally only last for 20 minutes or so. And right. Maybe, it would still be breaking the arrow as far as I remember, but you could just be the two kings and their immediate supporters coming up and uh, meeting in front of the barn and uh, mm -hmm. having, a, having an impromptu uh, uh, discussion and starting the war. And court was a great, you know, there were no individual kingdom courts. There was a great court that, I mean, there were not so many kingdoms back then. Right. And, you know, Kaid in the West didn't generally come. Um, so there would be an East and a Middle joint big court in the barn that everybody went to. And Which later morphed into all, when it got bigger in the 20s, every kingdom would be set up in the barn their thrones and uh, it would go forever and, go forever forever. And, forever and everyone would do their own court and then they then they were sort of restricted it to wow. one item of business but then everyone would do an elaborate peerage ceremony and by yeah. the time you've got eight elaborate peerage elaborate peerage ceremonies in a row it would yeah. i mean I'm, a few times going for a meal coming back and the same ceremony was going on for some <laughs> that's a long time Oral from Anstior, I don't know what it was, but <laughs> so uh, yeah, and then they, they, I think it was then decided after that that it's not, you can't have everybody having kingdom court at the same time in the, in the same ceremony. <laughs> so although it used to be nice to see the uh, see all the royalty, all, all the royalty place. all in one place. And, I mean, now you sort of get that at opening ceremony, but uh, yeah. it's shiny and cool. <laughs> How did you hear about the SCA? Uh, it was a gentleman from At Atlantia moved up to Ottawa for his, to do some research for his masters, and he was in the SCA, and he brought his armor out to Can Games 2, I think. And a bunch of us in, in 
Carlton University Strategy Club were at that right. were at that event, and a bunch of us looked at the armor and went, "This is cool!" And <laughs> instantly joined. And the, the group was new there. Sivia had started the group. Um, she moved up from Toronto and started it. And then um, Thomas of Linlithgow, who was this gentleman that he's talking about, and then Emmett had moved up at shortly after too. So there were like three experienced people that started the group. And um, Sivia moved back, so back, back to Toronto shortly thereafter. Yeah. And so it was Emmett and, and Thomas who were kind of the leaders of the group yeah. back then. And we were all university students and teenagers, you know, we were all, Emmett was, you know, older than us and Thomas was a bit older than us. Yeah. And then Yora and our first Herald was about that age too, but all the rest of us were. All at Carleton? Most, Mostly, yeah. There were a few others, but mm -hmm. uh, that uh, Sivia got, got in through the Science Fiction Society. That's where I found out. I was not in the um, strategy club at that time. So I, f I found out about it through the Ottawa Science Fiction group that was uh, back then. Yeah. And then once I found the SCA, I sort of left the science fiction group behind. <laughs> yeah. I think this was what I'd been looking for all along. Oh, uh, one last question. Um, what is... Uh, been the best thing about being in the SCA for 40 years? Like, what has the, been the, the best takeaway? The friends. The friends. The friends. We've made yeah. amazing friends who have been with us all, 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 all along, so yeah. some of them. And, uh, and uh, yeah, chosen family. That's, that's what it is, really. For sure. Yeah. And then raising my kids in it, you know, that, that's been a wonderful experience. I think it's a great place to raise children. I agree completely. Yeah, absolutely agree. <laughs> Um, mm -hmm. so. And it also helped me uh, grow up a lot. Yeah, he was a. Uh, I was very young. He was very young. <laughs> <laughs> Bit of a project. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow, forty years. That's incredible. Yeah, we were babies. Since seventy-eight. So. Yeah, so I, was I, was I was in high school. I was in high school when I joined. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. So you grew up in Ottawa? Yeah. Mm, well, she didn't not entirely. I, I was a Navy brat. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I grew up in Halifax, Victoria, Ottawa, England. <laughs> Everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, we did have our four years out in um, Castle Rouge when he was with the military. That's Winnipeg, right? Winnipeg, yeah. yeah. Well, Brandon we were in, but... Uh, that was, that was an interesting, interesting to be part of a completely different group and even more isolated than Ottawa had been when, it, when we started. <laughs> we made some good friends out there and we were, we were, we were sorry to leave. You know, we, we were happy to come back, but we left good friends there. And, uh, um, were Melina, well, yeah, were Christina and uh, Eric out there at the same time? Uh, Eric Christina was, was. Yes, Eric was. Eric. Yeah, because they were already together. Yeah. Yeah. That they were fairly new. Like we left about a year after they, they joined. Yes, so we did know them out there. Yeah. And uh, Mencken had already left. Mencken had been had started there, but he had gone before we got back, before we moved out there. Yeah. Um, Lady Elspeth joined out there too, but many years after you'd left. Yeah. yeah. Don't remember her. Um, well, do you guys have any other stories that are popping into mind? Anybody else you want to remind people have been in the SCA for 40 years? Because that's funny. Sivia, <laughs> <laughs> Anna, Henry. Um, who else is a... We have lots of... Ragni Finbar. Enid's oh. the going to be interviewed. Do you have any questions for her? Uh, who are you going to interview? Uh, not me, but somebody else is going to interview Enid. Mm -hmm. Oh. Not really, but uh, yeah. I do have one, one little thing. One of, back in... in Comes at eight, nine, ten, eleven. All the Canadians would get together before the field battle and sing "Oh Canada." Oh Canada, yeah, that would have been cool. Yeah. So. Well. <laughs> Not now, but back then nobody cared. And, uh, it was just something weird we did. Yeah. I think Kat, That's cool. I think Kat, yeah, could have been. They sing it sometimes marching in. Eldermere does. Mm. We have so many other songs we can oh, sing. <laughs>
Oh, the Mencken runs. Do you yeah. remember though? Were you going to Penzik with the Mencken runs? Oh yeah, up the hill. Yeah, yes. that's crazy. Those were fun. Yeah, they lasted what three or four years. Four years. Four years. And I think the red one every time. Yeah. <laughs> Every year, yeah. Yeah, but that was an Eldermere thing. Yeah. You know? Well, no, a couple of Outlanders ran it one year. Yeah, but I mean, it was yeah. started, but it was an, it, it was, was completely Minkins. Yeah, yeah, that was fun. Just to, just to, because everybody used to complain about having to march up the hill in armor, so he said, ah, you march up the hill, you run up the hill. <laughs> Definitely a warm up. Oh, yeah. yeah, and it was always at, at starting at noon on the sun, the first Sunday of of, of war. And people had to run. And you didn't have to be a fighter, but you did have to wear full armor, carry a shield and a sword, and run up from the bottom to the. Carry one. Well, that's why. That's why I had the red one. He was only carrying the full one. Fat <laughs> in the fact he's in fantastic shape. And, and he, he, yeah, his light, legs. light, and his light chainmail. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, starting at Eldermere Royal, right? Yeah. It would start yeah. at Eldermere Royal and end at Mid Realm Royal. Yeah. Crazy. In the same place back. It's always been in that place, and pretty much. And people come out of Mid-Realm Royal and look at us as we panted across the finish line like we were completely crazy, which of course is correct. <laughs> that hill has got to be 65 degrees. Like... <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. That hasn't ch that's another thing that hasn't changed in 40 years. <laughs> this is a gradient hill. <laughs> like, when you said that the battles were there, like, yes, yes. that's crazy. <laughs> well, the road wasn't there at that point. Yeah, there was no road down the middle. And, and yeah. we fought not up and down, we fought sideways across it. Yeah, so yeah. we were on a slope. So yeah. One end of the, each line was up and one was down. You, you set your helmet down, it would be at the bottom. <laughs> oh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the ice cold showers? Very much, yes. Because they, they didn't even have the solar showers at the early ones. Oh, so, yeah, mostly, because it was only for three days, I think, yeah, there was just this, the, the bathhouse, really. just went to the swimming bowl and cleaned themselves without soap there. Yeah, yeah, because there was just the ones in the bathhouse, and that was, um, yeah, there was like, what, two of each, three of each, I and think. And Penzik 8 and Penzik 10 were both very rainy, very, very rainy, so uh, that's why there was only one battle at Penzik 8, because everything else got rained out. Penzik 10... That's, yeah. the, the river was the creek bottom was so high we used it as a defensive uh, barrier to hide the banner in the woods which didn't work at all <laughs> but did get some interesting fighting in the water uh, did you bother sleeping at all in the early days <laughs> you didn't get much sleep <laughs> and the drive home could be a sleep deficit thing you're just Dead. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but again, st set up and take down took you know an hour maybe because yeah. you know it wasn't the same kind of major deal that it is now. Yeah, you didn't have nearly as much to pack. You just had a mundane tent. You know, there were probably six six of you in a car that was falling apart because nobody had good cars back then. <laughs> no, nobody did. I think Pendic Nine. There were six of us in Sylvia's car. Yes. Yeah. She had one of those bench front seats, so it was one, two, three, four. Of course, I was the smallest, so I was in the middle of the front. <laughs> <laughs> and she had 30 peacock feathers and a boron and a guitar in there. And there was. Uh, allowed to lean on the guitar. Yeah. On the <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yes, that was a fun trip. Well, thank you guys very much.